Today, we're going to be discussing graceful correction, loving correction, calling a brother out in Christ. There's so many ways that we could call this, but the bottom line is how do we talk to someone who we know is a believer about something that they're doing that we know is not true to the Christian faith, but doing it in a way that Jesus would approve. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Meli Unfiltered Podcast, hosted by me, Melissa Arroyo. Thank you guys so much for checking this episode out. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, like, and if you ding the notification bell on YouTube, you'll get notifications of my newest episodes. Welcome back if you've been here before. Thank you so much for your continued support. I love you guys so much, sincerely. <clears throat> And I'd love to read more of your comments. Let me know your thoughts, maybe some ideas for future episodes, maybe some scripture related to the topic that I'm talking about. And also, if you have a prayer request, please leave that in the comments below. I want to talk about Russell Brand. Let's watch this clip of him. Oops, he got baptized. Felt changed, transitioned. I feel as if some new resource within me has switched on. And the day after he got baptized, people criticized him because he was looking at tarot cards or using tarot cards. And there's multiple things that I want to say about that. But the bottom line is that him being baptized is very sincere. Here's a short clip about it. I'm learning and I will make mistakes, but this is my path now. And I already feel incredibly blessed, relieved, nourished, held. It's when we're new to, be to being Christians or even being raised as Christians, with whatever denomination we are, we are not going to get it right all the time and not understand everything. And even if we're well-seasoned Christians, have been Christians for many years, it doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we're immune to the attacks of the enemy and for our hearts to be corrupted. That is not the truth. The truth is that we must be vigilant in what we do every day and make sure that we're reading scripture. Make sure that we are spending time with God and have people around us that can gracefully correct us. So the reason I was bringing up Russell Brand is because <laughs> there is many people who are Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, that were highly critical of what he had to say. I'm not going to display the comments, although they're public. There's just people giving him backlash, especially about the tarot cards. And I'm not saying that it's okay to look at tarot cards, be involved in the occult, yoga, witchcraft, all of these things. And I'll make a specific video about these things. And what the thing is, is that when we are gracefully or when we're lovingly correcting a brother in Christ, I, I really do believe that there is a way to do it, a time to do it. And he is so kind and very open to people's comments. Love that about him. He's open to correction. That is amazing. <laughs> Not everyone is, and it might be because he was spiritually already open and he was already practicing a lot of that. Okay, let me, let me broaden my mind and not be fixated. Be, be able to be corrected, especially by people who he trusts and hopefully the people in his life that are true believers in Christ and can guide him along, have a dis have discipleship with him. I think that's the thing. New believers, all believers should have mentors, discipleship, brothers and sisters in Christ that we could lean on. And it sounds like he does. He did mention in a, another video, maybe the same one, his wife is actually Catholic. And so he has people in his life who are are Christians. And again, your preference in denomination is beside the point. We're speaking broadly before we start nitpicking denominations. That's part of the problem. We, although are one body, we act divided. And I'm not saying that there's some things that I agree with with everyone. I don't agree with every denomination on every subject. 
I don't. However, I see the big picture. I see them as my brothers and sisters in Christ. I see you guys as people that I love that are part of one body. You're part of my body. <laughs> it sounds so silly to say you're out of context, but it's true. We are the same body. And I want to love you guys well. And that sometimes does mean graceful correction. My version of graceful correction or loving correction is not going to look like everyone's. Sometimes some people do need a little bit more of a stern talking to. I would personally advise, and this is coming from counseling, like I'm a mental health counselor, as well as someone that just has seen this play out so many times. Some people do need a little bit more of a stern talking to. I'm not saying in a way that cuts people down. That's never okay. Even if they are doing something terrible, as believers, we know that people are redeemed by the blood of Christ. So if they're already believers, we must step aside from our personal hurt, from our personal preferences, our own personal judgments, and see the person as not only a creation of God, but as the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that they're perfect. Remember, we were, we all are imperfect people. And if you don't like what I'm saying, you might be feeling a little convicted, I know, because I've had to do this for myself. I've had to look at myself and really see like, why can't I forgive this person? Why can't I see this person the way God sees them? And it's really important for us to look at the other person and treat them in a loving manner. That being said, ooh, Proverbs is one of the most wonderful places to look at how important it is for correction. I mean, there's so many examples, but one of the ones that stood out to me when I was looking at scripture to talk about and tie into this episode is, my children do not reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. That's Proverbs 3.11. And also, Proverbs 10, 17, people who accept discipline are in the pathway to life, but those who ignore correction will go astray. Very true. That's why I'm not worried about Russell Brand. I pray for him and he is lovingly and acceptingly taking on those prayers. He said it also in a video that he receives them and feels them when we pray for him, which is awesome. I love it. And it sounds like he's very open to correction. He himself even said that he's not perfect in the way he's going about it. And that's true, especially because he is new to the faith and he has a lot of layers to peel. As a person who I grew up in the Catholic Church, I had a relationship with Jesus Christ. No, I didn't worship Mary. <laughs> I federated her, which means I saw her for the mother of Jesus Christ, who she is, and I still do, but <laughs> nonetheless, then I created false idols out of my romantic relationships. And when those kept letting me down, the devil stepped in and corrupted my viewpoint on love, even though I knew true love in Christ, because I wasn't vigilant every day and I wasn't surrounding myself with believers at least believers that I can confide in and I actually didn't even confide in anyone so the devil secluded me and led me down a path slowly a veil was put over my eyes and I was looking at the world in an in an obstructed view in a skewed way and I started letting the ways of the world which a lot of new age stuff is very popular astrology and gemstones and tarot readings that is so popular especially among millennials i remember growing up people were like oh what's your sign and i thought it was so normal i got sucked into that world and coming out of it years later it took me some time and some graceful correction and a lot of time with god honestly scripture told me more than any other person could what God really wants to me in prayer, the conviction we feel because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us and we're open to correction. Holy Spirit lets us know if we're going down the wrong path. So 
again, like I'm just using Russell Brand as an example because he is a person on the hot seat right now. I know Kat Von D was in the hot seat not so long ago and I'm so proud of her. I'm so excited. All these people, especially celebrities, are sharing their faith out in the public, letting people know the greatest needs of all of the love of Christ. It's so good. So graceful correction is important. And how do we know we're being graceful? We're doing it out of love, loving correction, right? So what does love look like? Let's read the scripture that a lot of people are surely familiar with. <laughs> this is 1 Corinthians 1 through 8. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge... It will come to an end. I love that scripture personally. It's one of my all-time favorites. I know it's stereotypical, especially for weddings, but it is amazing and really shows us what love ought to look like. And that includes when we're correcting our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ought to love one another. And especially the way it says it, we're just making noise if we're not doing things out of love. So, Whenever we are feeling stirred to correct a brother and sister in Christ, make sure you're doing it out of love. And remember to look at 1 Corinthians 13 to direct you in the way to speak to that person. And I promise you, it is hard, especially if you don't have your anger in check or you don't have your own triggers, your own pain points, your own personal preferences and hangups looked at if you haven't taken care of that and healed that and are giving it over to god it's going to be harder for you to gracefully correct other people because you're not correcting yourself it's like scripture says take the log out of your own eye and that is really hard we may think we have it all out but oftentimes especially if we're getting worked up in a way that is not love there may be a little bit of personal issues on the way and even the enemy stirring you up so this is something to consider and yeah again thank you guys so much for catching another episode of the Melly unfiltered podcast i love you guys so much like subscribe comment i can't wait to hear from you guys i'll see you in another episode. Take care.